Hey guys, welcome back to another video, Cup of Kodo One. So today, uh, this is another video that's going to be for a viewer who uh, wrote in saying they're having a little difficulty with a piece of code. Uh, two different pieces of code. We're going to cover both of those in this video because one of them is pretty quick. This first one was a comment left on how to master Python in 100 days, day 11. I'm going to scroll down here and we'll find by eye in the sky. Um, they they copy the code and then they're showing that they keep getting on line four, four I in uh, capital I or lowercase L, syntax error, invalid syntax. Um, and it is totally correct because this code has one little boo-boo in it. Now I copied this and I pasted it. And I almost did, actually I'm, I'm lying, I wrote it, but then I was able to reproduce the error. So I'll even take, whoops a daisy. Copy that, we'll take that and we'll show it in a second. So what I have here, I think I just said straight up divide when I, when I originally had done this, but I gotta make sure everything matches, right? Otherwise you're gonna be screwed. So you'll notice right off the bat on uh, in PyCharm here, it's highlighting this sequence and it's highlighting this sequence. And I can see up here in the corner, I have a little red circle here telling me that there's errors that are found. And sure enough, if I try to run this file, let me run DB. Um, let me even put this into a floating window so you can see what I'm seeing. Uh, just like the, the, the reader commented, yep, for I in L or look at you're gonna get a syntax error, invalid syntax. Now, there's two things I wanna mention about errors in Python. Whenever you get a debugger or a program telling you there's an error, absolutely look on the line where it's telling you, but then always look at the line before. Because sometimes the debugger's telling you, I'm the computer saying, I can't get past this line, or it's also saying, I can't, this is the line that I'm getting stuck on. So meaning the line before actually has the error. So with that being said, if we look at the code and it's a syntax error, right? So if we're looking at the code and it's highlighting this line and this line, I did not do this, line four and line three, it's highlighting here, you can see. When, and it's giving me the red line under here. Remember I said, this is the line that we're looking at, we're gonna start with. It could be this line or it could be the line before. So when I highlight this, we got a for loop. We're looking at our indentation. That's fine. It's an element. It's inside of a variable. That's fine. The variable is a split of a string. Okay. From an input. Cool. We have our colon here. So it's not that we're supposed to end the colon. So I'm going to go to the line before I have a variable L it's equaling S dot split S is named. It's defined. So it's not, it didn't give me a, you know, S not defined or L not defined uh, error. So S is dot split. That's, that's appropriate open parentheses because split is a function, open parentheses because I'm gonna put in the actual input that I got for S, and then I have parentheses, comma, parentheses to close that string, telling it I wanna separate it, I wanna split it by a comma, and then I'm closing the function, I'm sorry, I'm closing what I wanna split it by, and then look, I've never closed the function. The function of split was never closed. You're, all this code was missing was a simple parenthesis. So you see how right now I have two, parenthes, two parentheses that are yellow? Because this one matches for this one. These guys are brothers. So when I get to this one, it's going to highlight its corresponding parenthesis. When I get to this one, it's red. There is no corresponding parenthesis. So when I hit shift parenthesis, now look what happens. Now it's yellow. The inner and the outer are yellow for the function, the dot split function. And then my inner and outer are yellow for the actual comma separation that I want to do but the split mat, the split function. So now that I have it, also look what happened. Highlighting on four went away, highlighting on three went away, L is no longer grayed out, and my red mark up here went away. So of course now when I run it, it says enter the binaries. So what it wanted, this code, which I didn't copy here, is it wants uh, four binary uh, values. So I'm gonna do a zero, zero, one, zero, comma, um, why did you do that to me? You're gonna make me cry. I know, because I'm trying to put it in. My keyboard just got ridiculous. Give me that, thank you. Zero, zero, one, zero. I'll do that, I'll do one, one, zero, one. I'll do one, 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 and I'll do zero, one hundred, and I'll hit enter, and it's giving me an output of one, 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 and if I went through this code, which I did in the video, that's appropriate. Um, I did want to mention one other piece here, and it had to do with dimensions. Let me see if I put that on another file. I think I put, I did, sweet. So, 
why do I have this number two here in the code? Um, this has to do with, it's a base system two. Cause remember I said binary, binary is a two system base. If I put um, nothing, then it's not going to even use any kind of a base. It should give me an error when I do this. Oh, zero codes. Oh no, I kept it. I, I thought I got one of, got rid of one of the parentheses again. Um, now it's not even looking for a base. So now it's going to give me anything where modulo five equals zero. It's going to give me that actual output. So let's, I'll give it the same zero, 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 one, uh, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one hundred. And we'll do all ones. And these are the only two outputs where modulo five actually equals zero. The other ones are going to have uh, some kind of remainder. So that was all by changing the base. Right now it's just going to be a default. If I went to base, if I went to a base of three and I did the same thing, let me run the code. It's going to give me a uh, zero, 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 one. Now it's giving me this output. This is the only one that had a modulo five equals zero with a base of three. I just wanted to point that out uh, just so people are aware. Uh, that's what that number two was in the actual original code. And I used the base of two because this was talking about binaries. And of course, binary means two. So I hope I, that answered that question. Uh, now we can move on to the next part. Um, this is what I was just talking about. I just have test equals integer of 10, 10. There's no base there. So if I actually run this code, base test, let me run base test. There we go. It gives me 10, 10, because I'm at a, you know, a base of one. It's nothing special there. If I go to a, uh, do, 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 let's go to a base of two and print it out. Come on, man. Now it's giving me 10 because now I'm doing a base of 10. If I go to three, it should jump up substantially because I'm a base. Yep. 30. Now I'm going to go to four. It's not going to be 40 because we're doing bases. So it's very different. 68. So if this doesn't make sense to you, the bases, what I did do is I found, um, this is a great do do. Let me, let me see if I can bring this over. This is a great resource here. Uh, math central dot uregina.ca. This whole code here, backslash QQ backslash database. But if you follow this bad boy, um, you will get to a really good resource about uh, base powers um, to understand what I meant when I was doing that. So let's close that out. We don't need that anymore. And this is the next piece of code that this um, re that this uh, reader was asking about. So let me go. What is this? This is test.py. So let's run it and let's see where we get. All right. So what they were asking, let's actually go to the question so we can actually make sense of it. We can close this out. This was part of how to master Python 100 days day 10. Let's go down and see what they say. So they have X, Y equals zero one. So we have two variables, zero for the X, one for the Y, cause it's going to follow order while Y is less than 50. So we're good there. Colon. Yeah. Print Y. I have print X and Y I added the X and you'll see Y in a second. And then I have X, Y equals Y, X, Y equals Y comma X plus Y. So we're just doing the Fibonacci sequence where you take two numbers, add them together, and then that the, the result floats down to your X, and then the Y is going to be the addition of the next number and so forth. So they're saying they wrote this down. They didn't understand how um, X essentially could hold two positions at once, and it does not hold two positions at once. Uh, let's run through this and see if it will make more sense to you. So we're actually going to use uh, the debugger on this as well so we can kind of step through it. So let's run the debug. And this is, like I said, test.py. Good. I'm going to close this. We're going to bring the debugger into a float mode. Let me bring you up here, Mr. Debugger. Thank you. And let's, let's F8 through this. So we got a variable X at zero and a variable Y at one. All right. It's appropriate. While Y is less than 50, well, right now it's one. So that's true. So we're going to go inside the loop, print X and Y. So I can see on the bottom here, I printed X and Y in my console, which is zero and one F eight. Now, now it's saying X, Y equals Y comma X plus Y. And I think this is where the confusion lies. So computers don't necessarily read right from left. They don't necessarily always have to do things in a sequence where our brain does it. So I think what the, per what the person's seeing is they're seeing this as if I look at this line here, zero comma one equals one comma zero plus one. That's how they should be reading it. 
exactly what I just said it. So let's actually hashtag that through. I'm trying this one-handed here. So this is the way that we're seeing this, the way the computer's seeing it rather, I should say, is zero comma one is equaling one comma zero plus one. So right now, X is not holding any new additional position. It's still holding what it was holding up top, up above. Am I gonna have to redo that? I am gonna have to restart that. Now that I had that code there, let's keep this. Let's run the debugger yet again. Run the debug on test. Let's F8 through it. And you can even look in the special variables. X is zero, Y is one. So we can see we're legit there. And we'll go back to that if we need to. Just wanted to go through there, print X and Y. We printed X and Y. Now you'll see, uh, uh, let me go one more step just so we have it. So now we printed one, one. You can see in the, in the variables, X never held more than two positions. It only held one position. It was holding zero for this line. It held zero for this line and it held zero for this line. After I executed this line, that's when X changed. So to even bring that closer to home, let's get even more in depth. So we're got, actually I'll keep it on the, the variables for you because I know you were reading that. So X is still zero, X is zero, X is zero. Right now, I didn't execute yet. So X is still zero. When I execute through this, X then becomes one because of the formula, because X plus Y, zero plus one equals one. So right now on this side, it stands as zero. On this side, it still stands as zero. It's not until I execute it that then the X is being updated to one. So it's never holding two positions at once. Right now it's holding a position of zero and now it's holding a position of one. Why? Because it did the formula. I executed that line number four. So right now it's holding a position of one. It's still holding one here. X is still holding one. I did not yet execute this line. When I execute the line, now it's gonna be going up into two for Y. Here we go. And as you can, it's just gonna keep rolling. It only holds that position after the line is executed. Update. I went too close, too fast for PyCharm but I think it's because I'm also recording the screen. So this, again, I just want to quickly show that on the hashtag, what it is that it was seeing. When you are running code, the mathematical piece, anything you're doing, it doesn't have to be math, is not, variables are not updated until the line is executed. And that that's exactly why pre variables prevent holding uh, two different values in the same location. If they did, then you're to something now called quantum, compute, quantum computing, um, and you do not want to be there yet, trust me. Uh, so I hope that answered your question. If not, let me know. All right, guys, we're going to end that video here today. And uh, when we come back, we're going to start rocking out NumPy in two different versions. I have some NumPy in uh, PyCharm here, and then we're going to be rocking out some Jupyter Notebooks that are going to have a lot of NumPy also. It's going to be essentially, I'm creating uh, these next couple of days and one or days is going to be like a crash course into the machine learning and deep learning world that we're going to be dancing in. So with that being said, everyone have an excellent day and I will see you tomorrow.